Hey folks! Today's video is going to be your semi-annual, semi-regular anti-haul because I haven't done one in a while. I was due for uh, an anti-haul because there has been some shenanigans. There has been some products that have come out recently that I'm like, mmm. I have some thoughts stored up in this little noggin of mine. But before I get talking about the products, if you are new to my channel, hello, my name's Abby. If you've never seen an anti-haul before or don't know what they are, welcome. How are you? How's it been the last few years? Um, it was a series of videos that was popularized by Kimberly Clark here on YouTube, who is a drag queen and activist and performer. And I started doing these a few years ago and I really like doing them and you guys seem to like them as well. So I'm gonna keep doing them. Um, but definitely go check out Kimberly's channel because there are lots of nuggets of information from the last several years. Uh, if you wanna go back and watch some of her old anti-hauls because I sometimes go and watch them. Just <laughs> it reminds me of a, a simpler YouTube time. And also before we dive into the products, if you would like to follow me on any of my other social media, my Instagram and my Twitter are both Abbers07 and then my Twitch and my TikTok are both Abbers without the 07. Um, and then it actually Abbers07 is my Sims gallery tag. So if you ever wanna see this shit I post on the Sims gallery, there's that because I play a lot of Sims on Twitch. So if you'd like to come follow me there, we have a good time. Usually it's chaos. It's a good time nonetheless. Now let's jump into the products. Okay, the first thing is actually not like a specific product, but it was stemmed by a bunch of different ColourPop products that have come out recently. And they came up with a new product. Uh, it's their new mega matte, matte about hue. It's just like a rainbow palette that's all matte colors. And it got me thinking that at this point, I wonder <laughs> how many new people are discovering ColourPop every day because of TikTok, because of social media, the the quickness with which everything changes and fluctuates and, and new people come on the platform. And like, I saw another video the other day of like a bunch of trends that were really big on YouTube in 2015 are now big on TikTok. It's a whole new world, okay? I'm, it's, I'm still a little bit lost, but ColourPop, has put out so many products at this point, and I don't have much at all, to be honest. And I wonder, is anything new from them anymore? <laughs> I really don't think so. I really don't think there is anything that ColourPop is putting out, or ColourPop has put out in the last like year, that is truly original, even within their own line. Like ColourPop is putting out fast makeup at slightly better qualities than you can get at other places and other retailers because everything is done front to back in their lab and in their factory. So ColourPop has a unique place in the industry in that they can make things super, super quickly and turn over product super, super fast. But it also over the last several years, I'm just going on a tangent at this point, has really put this pressure on small brands, drugstore brands, uh, high-end brands, any brand that's wanting to kind of make it in the social media sphere. It's giving people this expectation that products are going to be coming out so fast. And I know that a lot of people in the YouTube sphere and in the YouTube beauty community has kind of grown tired of ColourPop at this point, but there's so much new stuff happening over on other platforms that I just don't want ColourPop to just keep doing what they've been doing because it's ridiculous. Like they have these big sales and people go on, they're like, oh my God, everything is so inexpensive. I can buy a bunch of stuff. You don't have to. You don't have to buy all of the things if all of the things are on sale. I get this way when I go to the grocery store and I'm like, oh, well, if this thing is on sale, obviously, and then I don't end up cooking with it. Um, I don't do that with makeup anymore because I very rarely buy new makeup these days and it's definitely not ColourPop. <laughs> like, I think the last piece of makeup I bought was probably a lipstick. I don't remember what it was or a lip gloss. I have no idea, honestly. And my whole point mainly is that ColourPop isn't putting out anything new and you don't really need any of the stuff from ColourPop coming out. If they have something that's very specific that like fills a hole, fills a need in your collection, if you're somebody that's wanting to build up a collection, you're like, oh, well, I don't have an all matte rainbow palette and that's something that I think I'm going to use by all means. But like, don't buy it just cause it's on sale, guys. Like just because something is on sale doesn't mean you have to buy it because one, 
When brands can have sales all the time, that means they're jacking up their regular prices to pay for the sales. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing when you go on those like websites that are kind of sketchy and like do like bootleg stuff that it's like, is this really this dress? Like, sh like Shein or whatever. Things will say that they're on sale all the time or things will be like, oh my God, it's originally $300, but we're only having to pay 120, amazing. It was never worth $300 to be in with. It's tactic to get you to pay more and to get you to think, oh, well, I'm getting such a good deal because it's on sale when in fact it really only cost them like pennies to make, okay? So please don't fall into the cycle of like seeing a sale and being like, oh my God, I need all the things from the sale because it's on sale. If there's something that you were already gonna buy and now it's on sale, great, awesome. But like, don't just keep track of all the sales. <laughs> for the sake of wanting to go buy things specifically during sales because you end up spending more because you're following more brands and you're paying more close attention to when they have sales. So then you just get like more inclined to buy more stuff, you know? I feel like the biggest thing that's really helped me stop buying so much is just stop looking at my fucking phone. <laughs> like stopping following things, just not getting so invested in new releases. <sighs> if you're wanting to spend less on makeup stop following them on social media <laughs> honestly but yeah ColourPop I'm bored I'm bored ColourPop I like their like liquid liners but like that's the last thing I bought from ColourPop I have like a white liquid liner from ColourPop that I probably bought like three years ago <laughs> to be honest I do not remember the last thing I bought from ColourPop Next, okay. Okay, this was something that I saw and I was like, okay, this is actually, not that I'm like excited, but I saw this and I wasn't immediately annoyed by it as like a celebrity owned brand because so many celebrity owned brands, I've talked about them in the last two versions of this video. In the last two anti-hauls, I've ragged on celebrity brands. But when I saw Ashley Tisdale was coming out the brand, in my mind immediately, I was thinking she was gonna come out with something that's like very Y2K and like very reminiscent of like her iconic style from the early 2000s MTV red carpets with like skirts over jeans and like a million scarves. Like <laughs> Ashley Tisdale was a style icon of the early 2000s. Don't get it twisted. But she came up with a very kind of modest like body care line with like bath bombs and like a body serum and what else? What else? Perfumes. I'm like, okay, this doesn't bother me. Like so many celebrity owned brands are coming out with makeup or like full skincare lines with like $95 serums or some stupid price point like that. But this is called French. I don't know how it's pronounced. It, it, it's spelled like Frenchy. That's an F, right? Yeah, French. I don't know. Um, it, it looks like French, but the prices are like really inexpensive. They're like $19 at the most. Body linen mist. Uh, hair mask, candles, hand. This is just like a bo bath and body brand. I'm like, okay, I'm not mad at this. I'm not annoyed at this. I don't necessarily think I need any of it because I have a lot of things that I already have, but like, I like the design aesthetic. I like that there's perfume oils. Like that actually seems kind of fun and it's at Target. I would not be angry if more celebrity brands focused on the drugstore as opposed to filling up every free counter and free end cap at Sephora and Ulta, you know, like, it's kind of cute. I'm not mad. <laughs> I don't need it, but like this did not upset me seeing it on Instagram. Cause I'm like, okay, bath and body stuff. You don't see a lot of influencers doing bath and body things. I follow a handful of like bath and body small brands. I like talked about some soaps and bath bombs recently in a video, I guess recently was like several months ago. I don't know, some independent ones. And I I like following new ones. And I do like trying new ones of, of those kind of products because they're things you use up very quickly. They're things that are fun. They're frivolous, they're smelly. They smell good. They make you feel good in the shower. Hour. I don't know. I'm not mad at this. Am I gonna buy it? Probably not, but I'm not mad at it. And it's a Target, you know? I like Ashley Tisdale. The branding is kind of basic, but I don't feel like a lot of people have done that kind of branding for like bath and body stuff because so much of the bath and body stuff you get at Target are like either very like Dr. Bronner's or like the bath salts. What is it? Paul's? Dr. Paul, Dr. They're all very doctor oriented and very like medicinal or they're like cupcakes, all the bright color sparkly things, which is like, if that's your thing, that's awesome. Like I love bright sparkly cupcake food shaped things, but like this is a little more minimalist, but it's not quite medicinal, you know? I don't know. I'm not angry with this. 
But anyway, now on to more products that I don't need. Um, Harry Styles brand, uh, his nail polish brand pleasing uh has come up with a new line and i will say the box is pretty the packaging is pretty but i have a couple of friends who have tried the nail polishes and they're not that great they're kind of basic you know like with something like this you're definitely paying for the name you're paying for the fact that it's connected to harry styles and i love harry styles i think he's great but i do not need nail polish that are branded with harry styles like i really don't need harry styles specific nail polish um one because i rarely wear nail polish and i don't really like spending a lot of money on nails Nail polish i will buy expensive and fancy like press on nails um uh, until the end of time i like press on nails and i like smaller boutique brands for press on nails i like those but for nail polish, I just don't wear it that much and I'm not willing to spend this amount of money on a nail polish that's really just pretty in the bottle. I like pretty bottles, but I'll just buy pretty bottles for things. Like I don't, the colors are like yellow, green, and blue, which are pretty and they're expensive. They're expensive nail polishes that are not that great. Like at least if you're gonna spend a lot of money on a nail polish, it better be good. Like it better be like the best nail polish. Um, but I, I've heard from people who actually own this nail polish that it's not that good and it's definitely not worth the price. So I don't need this, even though it's pretty pretty, but I don't need it. I really don't. Literally, you're just paying for the name. Like <laughs> something about the bottles being way prettier than the nail polish itself is kind of like, you're not going to get your nails to look like the lids of these bottles. Not that I expect them to look like the lids of the bottles, but like the colors themselves are just kind of like cream colors. Like they're not even like sparkly, iridescent, special kind of colors, you know? Like they're not that unique of shades. If the shades were like incredibly unique or like very niche and very specific, then maybe I could see spending more money on them. But these are just kind of basic cream colors that are not that good. <laughs> Spend less money and get better nail polish. Next. Okay, what's next? This is a new collection with I Heart Revolution. And how many brands does Revolution have now? Like three? I can't keep track of how many brands Revolution has, but it's a collaboration with the Looney Tunes. Okay. Why? 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 And the colors are just fucking boring. They just look like basic ass nine pan palettes. Like I don't, I really don't understand who is keeping, who is continuing to buy these like kitschy, boring collaborations with Revolution products to where they keep making them. Please, like I really wanna know because none of these seem that inspired. They just have pictures of the Looney Tunes on the front and that's it. It's the laziest fucking way to collaborate. I am so sick and tired of these kind of collaborations because they just have a giant selection of colors in their factory and they're like, okay, let's just pick out a handful of these to be for which character is this? Um, Tweety Bird? Okay, let's slap in a, yeah. They don't even have like a bright yellow in the Tweety Bird palette. I really, really want to know like who's buying these because I don't think I've ever seen somebody get really excited about these and they put them out all the time. There either has to be so much makeup going into landfill, which there definitely is in general, but like, I really want to know. Like I desperately want to know. <laughs> I'm not and none of my my peers are. It's so boring at this point. It's so boring at this point. And I know that like what I said earlier about brands and, and the cycle just being so fast and things being recycled from years ago, like I get it, but it's just, they're not that expensive. So it's not like it's breaking the bank, but like it's so lazy. It's so lazy. And then they have a giant palette too, which again, way too big for me, but none of these are that inspiring. It's just, it, it's Hot Topic makeup. And I love Hot Topic, don't get me wrong. Like I worked there and I love, I, I loved working there. It was a great time, but like their makeup is bad. <laughs> the makeup is bad. <laughs> and this just looks like that. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored by most things though, to be honest. Well, I stand corrected. This thing I saw and I was like, oh wait, that's kind of cute though. So I'm talking myself out of it. But Real Techniques came out with a new line of brushes that is their Fairy Vision face set. Magically transform your base with these four must have tools. They're makeup brushes, ooh, big surprise. But they are, the names are like Enchanted Entrancing Eye Makeup Brush, Enchanted Moonstone, whatever. But the brushes themselves are so pretty. 
The brushes themselves are so cute. There is a green contour brush, a pink setting brush, a aqua blue concealer brush, and then a purple foundation brush. And these are cute as fuck. But you wanna know what? These are not even all of my brushes and I don't need any more. Especially not a foundation brush that's like a paddle brush because I don't ever use like paddle type foundation brushes. I use kabuki brushes. And so the foundation brush wouldn't even really be my thing. The contour brush looks like the size of a brush I would use. Concealer brush I wouldn't use for concealer because I use my fingers for my concealer. So I don't even know if that would work as like an eyeshadow brush particularly that I need because I have way too many eyeshadow brushes. So these are pretty, but I would really only realistically get use out of two of them. So I don't need them. They're really cute though. That's something that I feel like brands could do. Like come out with brushes that are like colored bristles. Like most of the brushes coming out these days are synthetic anyway. So it's like, just make them pretty. <laughs> You're not using animal hair, like make them pretty. <laughs> I don't know. I like these. I think they're pretty, but I don't need them because A, I have too many makeup brushes. I have way too many. And then I have this one, and then I have like five in my makeup bag, and then I have this one from, oh wait, what is this one? Or no, I have this one from um, Kaleidos. And then this one I got in PR. Um, and then I got this one in PR that was really kind of weird. I'm like, this is the biggest, funkiest handle brush. I don't know. I don't need these brushes because I have too many already. <laughs> and if you are somebody like me who has way too many brushes and then gets really enticed by new brushes, this is your signal to stop. <laughs> Use the brushes that you have and wash them. I need to wash mine actually. Mine are probably pretty gross. Anyway, next. This is something also that I need to talk myself out of. Melt Cosmetics, which I have complicated feelings for. Um, they are relaunching the Muerte eyeshadow palette from their holiday collection like three years ago, I feel like. This is an old palette. Like this came out a long time ago. Time blends together from the pandemic. I don't know what what is 2021, 20, I don't fucking know what time is anymore. They're re-releasing the Muerte palette and like I was so close to buying it before, but I didn't. And I'm looking at this again and I'm like, do I want this? Would I use it? Do I need it? I don't know. So I need to not, I need to not, because if I didn't buy it the first time and I wasn't so inclined to buy it the first time, I shouldn't buy it the second time because I'm really not wearing colors like this much anymore. <laughs> like I'm wearing this, I'm wearing, or this is from the Escape Pod palette from um, Kaleidos, by the way, which has been like my favorite palette lately. Like everything on my face, except my blush and my contour are from the Escape Pod, including my highlighter. Anyway, um, I don't need this. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. It is objectively a beautiful palette. The outside, the inside, everything matches, but I don't need it, but I'm just not gonna use it. Also because I have those kind of like greeny tones and I really wouldn't use the like dark, dark blues that much. And so there's really not a lot of like new things in this palette besides the fact that they're kind of all together. But like I have those greeny kind of tealy tones, the light ones several times over in a melt palette and then also in a Kaleidos palette. So like, I don't need this. I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. <sighs> okay, this is something that kind of annoyed me. Um, I guess General Mills is coming out with a uh, Cereal scented candles, which like, you know, not a bad, that sounds fun. But the problem lies with the fact that there are plenty of indie brands that have done this exact same thing. Usually they don't name the products after the cereals. Some people like ride that line of like, mm, are you stealing the name? I don't know. The fact that General Mills saw the popularity of what indie creators were doing and then they're like, let's just do it ourselves, you know? Like <laughs> the fact that they hadn't thought of this before, just buy the cereal candles, buy the cereal milk candles from the indie brands that started the trend in the first place. Don't buy the ones that are put out by the big corporations that never actually jumped on that opportunity in the first place and now are just riding the coattails and making cheaper versions of it. Support the original indie brands that did it themselves. I had a Fruity Loops candle. I don't remember the name of the candle company, but like there's other brands that have done this. And the fact that the big brands and the big like corporations are just doing it probably worse I don't need it. Just buy. Yeah, they saw someone else getting money off of it and had to steal the idea real quick. Oh yeah, one of the top comments is uh, Kobe Lomax, the originator of the cereal candle. Yeah, so if you wanna buy cereal candles, just go buy from 
from the indie brands. Um, two more things, two more things. One that I was actually really, really excited about when I saw that it was happening, but then when I saw the final product, I was like, oh, okay. It's a collaboration with Trixie Cosmetics, Trixie Mattel, and Juno Birch, who makes Sims videos, who's also a drag queen, and I love Juno Birch. Pause. I love Juno Birch. She put out a U2s, I think last year, I didn't end up getting it, but like I would buy a plushie of a Joy Desperate. That's fucking hilarious. I love Juno Birch's videos. I think she's hysterical. I think her style is iconic. I think she's great. This palette though, I was so bored by it. I get what they were going for. I, I do, but the colors in here are so washed out that I don't know if they would really show up that well on many people. I don't know if the product photography is just not doing it very much justice, but like, <sighs> It's, it, the color story is not bad. The thing is, if they literally just upped the saturation and the opacity on the colors themselves, it could be very cool. But this version of it is so not for me. Human beings and Pluto Root are kind of similar to each other. And Flamingo is like the most desaturated pink shade. I really don't think that this is gonna show up that well on that many skin tones it just looks so washed out if this was like a like a cake liner palette with all of this that'd be fucking awesome but the fact that it's like powder eyeshadows that just look so powdery and they're not helped by the fact that the colors are so washed out i was so disappointed in this and i love juno birch i really really do I love her, she's fucking hysterical. And I was so stoked that she was getting a palette, but the colors are so washed out, oh my God. I saved the worst for last. And I know, I know that the brand did this as like a shit post of a, a release. I know that the brand did this as like, haha, look at how funny and quirky we are. We did a collaboration with Applebee's. Literally, I saw, like, we saw this. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine sent it to me and I'm like, wait, what? Applebee's? Apple, Applebee's. The shades are Get Me Hot Buffalo, Sweet Chili Kiss, Be My Honey Pepper, and Honey Barbecue Tea. Ow, pain in my soul. The names of the products alone are some of the, cr oh God, I thought, I thought Tarte was cringy. I thought Tarte was cringy when it came to naming products and Too Faced were cringy when it came to naming products. Honey Barbecue Tea? Oh, I hate it. I hate it. And their lip glosses. Bold high shine lip glosses that are inspired by Applebee's wing sauces. Who? Asked for this, please. I'm desperately wondering what person in the boardroom was like, hey, you know we can make some lip glosses based on? Fucking wing sauce. I hate this. <laughs> and I know that they put it out because they knew people were going to hate it. Like I know that, like that's what it is. But it also gets me kind of annoyed that brands do this when they know it's gonna get like, what the fuck kind of backlash? Because then you're just creating more waste and then you're just kind of feeding into the social media frenzy by putting out things that are stupid on purpose to get people to react to the stupid products which then sell more of the stupid products and then makes more brands make more stupid products let's just stop making stupid products for the sake of stupid pr literally there's just winky lux and applebee's put out some lip glosses that are based on wing sauces like just because you can doesn't mean you should and the idea of putting hot sauce on my lips like a color based on buffalo sauce no and also like are these supposed to be really pigmented because if they're supposed to be really pigmented that's also not my favorite kind of gloss oh these are very pigmented Ooh, that's not a formula I like and just like the the, the post that's on here is just like lip gloss chicken lip gloss chicken people applying lip gloss chicken wings it's so fucking weird <laughs> to have lip gloss and chicken wings in the same post and I also don't want to be thinking about chicken wings when I'm putting on my lip Gloss. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. If I could have been a fly on the wall in that boardroom, holy shit. Like, was it Winky Lux that came to Applebee's first? Or was it Applebee's that came to Winky Lux? Or 
Was it some third-party marketing firm that saw some sort of potential between Applebee's and Winky Lux and thought, hmm, you know what we could do? We could piss off all the people on the internet by putting out some chicken lip glosses. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's so weird. That was the worst thing I saw in, in makeup Instagram this week. I was like, no, no. There's plenty of other worse things I saw on the internet this week, aka that fucking TikTok plastic surgeon who photoshopped Natalia Dyer's face into some weird uncanny valley monster saying that she needed a bunch of work done. I'm gonna do a rant on that in the next video because like I kind of delved deep into her damn account and oh my god TikTok plastic surgeons are uh something else and I'm really glad that I'm not on that side of TikTok um because I hate it. Uh <laughs> anyway that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. Um let me know in the comments below what are some things you you've seen this week or this month since I posted my last one that are just questionable and dumb, um, let me know in the comments down below and what you think of these products. Start a chat, okay? Um, for today's song of the day, what have I been listening to? Um, I went to Timberfest a few weeks ago, an outdoor music festival. Josh and I went and it was glorious and it was wonderful and I cried. It was outdoors. It's not a very big one. It's very family friendly. People were like social distancing and like, it was just so great to be outside, seeing light music again, and oh god, li literally it filled my heart with so much warmth and joy. Made me so happy. There was an artist that played there, Caroline Rose, and she was great. She was one of the headliners, I think, and I had never heard her music before, and she was so fun live. Like, she was cheesing for the camera and just, like, paying attention to the camera, and I'm like, oh my god, I love this. Like, please, more people pay attention and, like, sing at the camera. It's my favorite thing. I'm trying to think of one other time when somebody sang to the camera and I almost like I got like flustered <laughs> it's happened a couple of times with like bands from back in the day probably the one that really kind of that sticks it out in my brain was like maybe 2015 or 2016 Capitol Hill Block Party um Angel Olsen played and she like stared into my soul via my camera lens and like I got the picture and I was just like <gasps> like I had like I gasped <laughs> in the pit and I was like oh my god like she looked right at me. Caroline Rose kind of did the same thing and she was so fun. She was so fun. It's very like fun kind of synthy pop music. Uh this record it's called Superstar but the song is called Nothing's Impossible and she is so fun. Oh my god she was so fun live. Nothing's Impossible by Caroline Rose is your song of the day. So definitely go check her out. She is a new discovery for me. Um I was pleasantly surprised but I'm always pleasantly surprised at Timberfest. Like I'm literally always happy happy there. Like even if the music is like not always my cup of tea, the people who curate the bands and curate the lineups for Timberfest are like amazing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not just saying that because they're my friends, but they're also like very good at what they do. Anyway, I will stop rambling now. Um, but if you want to check out any of my previous anti hauls, definitely check them out in the playlist down below or up here in a card this direction, right, right, right there. Right there, right there, check it out. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you wanna follow me on any of my other social medias, my Instagram and my Twitter are both abers07 and my Twitch and my TikTok are abers without the 07, as well as my Sims gallery page if you wanna look at any of the things I post on my Sims gallery. I don't post a lot because most of my stuff has custom content and I always feel kind of bad. <laughs> because you'll download it and be like, why is half the furniture missing? Because I use like a lot of custom content. My CC folder is um, probably close to 5,000 items at this point, <laughs> including create a sim and build by mode. That's a lot of things. So if you would like to follow me on Twitch, I play the Sims there almost all the time, Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you are having a good week. I hope you are having a good day. I hope you are getting enough rest and enough water, enough hydration. I hope you are staying cool. I know it's hot everywhere. It's finally cooled down here in the Seattle area. Like last week was excruciating and over the weekend was awful. Like even as I'm filming this, my back is sweating, but like on Wednesday, I think it's supposed to be like 69 degrees. And I'm like, it's my favorite temperature. Not just for the fact that it's like, haha, 69, but also like very comfortable. <laughs> very comfortable temperature for me because I am a weakling when it comes to heat. Anything over 85, I'm like, nope, I'm not going outside. I don't like it. I don't want to be outside. Bye. <laughs> See you all in my next video. Bye.